is the food, water, shelter, and space, and how they get those out of their habitat. All right, so first we're going to talk about the types of habitats. We have our forests. So they have many trees and shrubs and bushes, ferns, fruits, and fungi. Animals include deer, butterflies, bears, frogs, and several types of birds. There are also many different types of insects. Now, we'll talk about this more later, but the forest provides the trees and the fungi and the fruits and flowers for food. Trees can also be shelter. There's plenty of space in the forest. And water can come from rivers, lakes, streams in the forest, or uh, plants fall into water. Then we have rainforests. Rainforests are the large, thick forests that get lots and lots of rain. Most rainforests get over 200 inches per year. Now, Ms. Gates is about 63 inches. Ms. Rebuck is probably about 65 inches, 64, 65 inches. And I don't know how many inches Miss Miss uh, Holbrook, Holbrook is, but if you think about the fact that Miss Gates is 63 inches, and Miss Rebuck is probably about 64 to 65 inches, it would take a lot of us to add up to the amount of rain that rainforests get. It would take. Let's do some quick calculating here. But take it would take at least four of me stacked on each other to equal the amount of rain that rainforests get each year. Now, most rainforests are found in tropical areas near the equator, which we talked about in social studies and geography the last couple weeks. Rainforests hold a wide variety of animals, so lots of different kinds. They have monkeys and sloths and birds, insects, snakes, jaguars. You can see in this picture how many different kinds of animals there are. So, oceans. Oceans, as we talked about when we talked about the five oceans, cover most of the world. The ocean has a bunch of different layers, which means that there's a bunch of different habitats in the ocean. You can see in this picture, there's a layers all the way down here into these trenches and right at the top. This is the layer that we see most of with two things from down in here when we're at the beach or swimming around. So the plants usually grow closer to the top. And the further you go down into these layers, the less plants there are. The ocean habitat is the home of coral reef habitats. And just like the rainforest, there's a whole bunch of different animals. You can see just some of the animals in this picture. Then we have our freshwater habitats. Freshwater makes up 1% of the world's water habitats. That's because most of our, the world's water, fresh water, is in ice. But we'll get to that in a minute. So freshwater habitats include rivers, lakes, ponds, and streams. You have animals such as otters, frogs, and some ponds, lakes, and streams have fish. The wetlands Wetland habitats have many endangered species, which means that there's not many of them left, so we have to try and protect them. They also have a variety of plants, mostly grass-like, but you can see this one has some trees, some grasses, 
and other plants. Then we move on to our deserts, which are complete opposite of our water habitats. Deserts are the ones that are very hot and very dry. They get almost no rain. Cacti and Joshua trees, which are those funny looking trees that don't really have many leaves, they're really spread out and dry looking, are the two main plants that grow in the desert because they can do their best to store water. The animals, you can see a lot of them in this picture. You have lizards, Gila woodpeckers, that's not, that's a roadrunner. There's no woodpecker in there. Um, you've got some spiders. You have snakes. You have some foxes. They are very special bunnies. There's a lot of vultures and hawks. Now, a lot of the animals that live in the desert are nocturnal, which means they stay awake at night. And that's because it's a lot cooler at night because the sun isn't out shining down on them the whole time. It's a lot cooler at night because there's no sunshine, just the moon. Then we come to our Arctic habitat which is, again, completely opposite of the desert. The desert is very hot and dry. The Arctic is very, very cold. The Arctic is the area around the North Pole. Remember how we talked about the Arctic Ocean? Well, that's where the Arctic habitats are. So, seeds for plants in the Arctic habitat stay below the ice until it's warm enough for them to sprout and they grow very very quickly because there's only a little bit of time where it's warm enough for them to grow. Animals, you can see a lot of them in this picture as well, keep warm with either thick fur, so like this fox or this polar bear, or blubber, like this walrus, or these whales, or this seal. They have to do that because it is so cold. We wouldn't be able to stay up there without a lot of jackets. Now, now that we've reviewed our habitats, what do those habitats provide for the animals and plants in their environment? So, they provide food. Animals get food from the habitat. Animals get the food by eating other animals in their habitat. We don't really talk about food chains all that much, but here's an example of how an environment provides food through a food chain. So you have the grasshopper eating the plant, and then the mouse eats the grasshopper. The mouse eats the snake, or the hawk eats the snake. And decomposes, it turns into nutrients, which makes mushrooms. And then the nutrients and water with the sun cause more plants to grow, which means the grasshopper can eat, the mouse can eat, the snake can eat, and the hawks can eat. So that's how environments and habitats provide food. They also provide water. Some habitats provide water through streams, lakes, ponds, and other already available water sources. So, habitats like streams, lakes, ponds already have water, same with oceans. A lot of rainforests, if it's raining that much, they have a lot of water too. And a lot of them have waterfalls. Forests usually have lakes, streams, and ponds. So those are all habitats where animals would go ahead and get their water readily available. Other animals have to get their water by eating leaves and insects. So in, place, in places where there's not as much water available, they might, or if there's a dry season where the streams, lakes, and ponds are dried up, they might be getting their water in other places. In the desert, however, plants and animals have to adapt to find water. So the cactus, for example, stores water. And the Joshua tree is very thin and has more branches and very shallow roots to collect whatever water comes down right away so it can stay hydrated. The animals will eat insects um, 
or if they eat plants, they'll usually eat the leaves, flowers, and parts of the cactus to get their water. Habitats also provide shelter and space. Many animals live in plants, such as digging in holes in trees. Other animals burrow into the ground, like moles. Moles live underground. Um, bunnies usually burrow into holes in the ground. And then underwater organisms, so plants and animals, find home well, in this case, animals. Underwater animals find homes in plants and in caves. They find homes much like the land animals do because there are still plants and rocks and ground in the ocean. All right, and so that concludes our lesson. Crenshaw, you did a very good job listening. Say bye to our friends, and we'll see you next time.